Hey people, Shaman Hawk here for Shamanic Lodge. I'm going to talk a little bit about the Shamanic Network. I've mentioned it a couple times and finally got a message like, well, what is it? You know, so Shamanic Network is, and this is a, this is a definition by my experience because of my um, time in it. And there may be different types of networks out there. I, I don't know. I'm not familiar with them. <clears throat> the The people I work with, are proven shamans, meaning that they served a real apprenticeships. They've, uh, I know their lineage. Um, I knew their teachers, you know, their teachers were students with, with my teachers when they were students. And it's people that, uh, uh I completely trust. You know, I've worked with, I know their reputations, their capabilities, their history. And so, um, these people, they're in all walks of life. As an example, there's people within our network that are police, uh, lawyers, one judge, FBI, um, porn stars, <laughs> you know, uh, mercenaries. Or, no, that's a uh, that's military contractor these days. Yeah, it wasn't that when I was doing it. So. Um, you know, an example of how the different levels can work is when I went to Columbia back in 2002 for the one of the peace projects. And uh, Columbia at that time was the only country on the planet that had a war with four sides. You know, the government, the guerrillas, the paramilitaries, and the ELN. And um, <clears throat> long story how I got down there, what I did. But basically, it was from a second generation shaman meaning that i took one woman a french woman through the her apprenticeship shamanic apprenticeship and then she took a, a man a Colombian man through his apprenticeship and he became shaman and this is a guy that was working as a translator in the white house he would sit across from president clinton with the Colombian ambassador and uh you know do translation so it's up at that level and so uh, there's construction workers, there's maids, there's a, you know, this is a huge network. Uh, I wish it was bigger because more people need good shamans out there that will really spend the time with them. But uh, the phases that we go through, you know, like your life can change 180 degrees from one month to the next, meaning that you know, I could uh, be working on a great retreat project or I could be working in other countries or doing anything in any war zones or natural disaster cleanups, come back and then somebody would offer me a construction job of building a, a mall or an outlet store or even a, a home. And then I'll do that. But I'm still in it because it's interesting how um, I wanted to get out of shamanism for a little while, just go back into construction, be a regular guy and just kind of have a regular job and whatever. And got that. It worked out just great in the synchronicity only to find out I'm still doing shamanism in just a different area. Definitely a different, a different, uh, economic, uh, level class level working for some really powerful people as I'm building like $20 million homes, uh, being their confidant. Because some of these guys in these powerful positions, everybody around them is like a bunch of piranhas and or shark tank, I guess they call it. And they have nobody they can really talk to, not even their wives, you know, these guys. And so, um, and then some of these guys become supporting units in the shamanic network, you know. So, I mean, these are people too. One guy in particular, he, he had 5,000 people working under him directly you know and with his staff and in that little pyramid but then any decision he made could immediately affect you know 15 20 thousand people that day that hour you know uh, so <clears throat> and what do we do usually we're all kind of independent and then something will happen like with that peace project in uh in in Colombia, a few shamans got together that got me to get down there for the project I was working on. And it was a real tight-knit group. It was a really one of the best geomantic and alchemical projects I think I've done in my life. And uh, But then right after that, 
the group kind of separated, and I'm in downtown Bogota. It's just being bombed by the guerrillas. Yay, shamanism. So uh, after that, came back to the States and helped another guy turn his house into like a spiritual retreat and then brought other shamans together for that for a support unit and and then split apart again. So when these things happen, uh, there'll be like fundraising, there'll be building, there'll be uh, therapeutic services offered and uh, all kinds of support of uh, measures and activities done to make a project work or to serve a community, particularly let's say after tornadoes, hurricanes, you know, um, friends on the West Coast, they have volcanoes, earthquakes, stuff like that. Um, and so we get together, but the, and then the other part that comes up is when someone signs on with a shaman as an apprentice, and then let's say they go in, getting through their self exploration process, you find out that your student wants to go someplace that you weren't expecting and you can't take them in that direction. You know, uh, I mean, I, did, I was combat medically trained in the Marine Corps. I did my own uh, stuff with um, herbologies, natural medicines, energy healing stuff. And a little bit of the acupuncture, I understand it, and homeopathy from having a girlfriend that was a master clinician. But if somebody really wanted to go further into it, into matching shamanism with medicine, I'm not qualified. So I'd have to call somebody else and say, hey, I have an apprentice that would be more into your field than it is in mine. And this is where the network kind of comes together to help these apprentices, when they've discovered where their real path is, kind of come together and then take that person where they're uh, better situated or they get better training, a better supportive environment. Uh, and that's happened to me quite a few times. And I've taken other people's apprentices because where they were at weren't conducive, you know. Uh, one in particular, uh, a great girl, you know, just all of a sudden got, when she started doing her stone work and her altar work, she really got into geomancy and alchemy, sacred geometry, and it's like they gave her to me. So, um, how do we support ourselves? A lot of it's donations. A lot of it's out of pocket. I mean, I've had some awesome projects where I got paid really well. And then, you know, I'm donating to this project, that project, and so on. So, it's it, you go through these phases where you might be in this really cool situation where you're getting lots of money, but then you pay it out to other people's projects. And then at the same time, you could be really focused on your project, not making any money, but then getting support from the network internally and externally to help you with your project. And people say, well, why don't you become like a nonprofit organization or something like that? And it's like, well, that takes a lot of staffing and, you know, a lot of, a lot to maintain it. You know, I've, one of my daughters has a horse rescue and, and a friend of mine and I were going to do this one church idea and it was just so much administrative stuff. That's not me. And uh, I only know one other shaman that's really administrative, and that's the guy that got me to Columbia. Everybody else is more, you know, out in the field, we say, you know, out of the office. Uh, so most of us don't even know how to begin to do that. You know, I certainly don't. And nor am I the person to really be that dedicated to the administrative part. I'm more out in the field with people doing things. And... <clears throat> so if somebody wants to volunteer and set that up for us, that'd be awesome, you know. Uh, but the shamanic network is globally, it's interdimensionally, meaning that we can get projects from beings that aren't here that uh, uh, actually the Peace Chamber projects that went on back in the early 90s. And actually Joseph did that before that. He was in the late 80s. Um... Yeah, from 88, I think he started. But anyway, <clears throat> there, in, in doing that project, that was globally. And with that one, the external support not just came from outside the internal uh, circle, shamanic of the network, 
think in English Hulk. And um, that one came from interdimensional, supporting the outer circle again to support the inner circle of the shamanic network. I hope that made sense. In other words, these interdimensional beings help create the conditions, spread the word, so to uh, say, they got money to come back in to the internal circuit. Um, we help the families of other shamans, you know, we die, <laughs> okay? You know, from either age, uh, projects that kill us, conditions around the projects that kill us, or we just do something kind of dumb or whatever, time catches us and it's time to go. And then the families, you know, um, the kids and so on, it just, uh, some of us have kids without the families and they need support in going through that process and then that's when we all kind of come together from the internal support and then also from the external support so when we're taking donations in for that and you know when i'm working with people online you know um, a lot of times that's free work because people just just don't pay um <clears throat> it's different when you do appointments you know, it's kind of like you're setting it up at that venue and you're doing these appointments. You know that that's going to happen. But a lot of time we spend a lot of time on the Internet and doing things for people and then we don't hear from them again, which is good for the community work. Because the other thing we look at it is it's priming the pump, we say, energetically, meaning hey, I'm going to date myself here uh, in one of my grandparents' house, they had a running water in the, in the house, meaning there was an old iron well. And my <clears throat> brother would uh, stand on the kitchen counter and pump the long handle of this iron pump, you know, to pump the water into the sink as I was washing dishes or cleaning vegetables. But before that pump starts to pump water, you have to work the handle and you have to pour good water from down the top to prime that pump and so a lot of the community work that we do that's for free is like we call it like priming the pump and you're putting that water in to get the water out for prosperity magic that's how people when you're given the donations you're priming the pump for your own prosperity and so um, what else travel God, man, that, that really is a big one. The shamanic network really comes together for the travel part. So if somebody needs to go someplace for a project and uh, the people who are forming the project, and this, this happens with retreats a lot of times. If people have, uh, let's say, grandparents or somebody dies, gives them land, they're like, okay, well, what can I do with this? And they want to do a retreat. One of the things that I specialize in is getting retreats started almost, almost a zero budget but using the uh, resources around there making it really rustic and then building it up as you go along but you still got to get there and it's kind of like you know I, I don't pay for travel costs out of pocket to places that aren't going to pay because that just puts you in that, that drain but what we have seen is when other people donate into the travel part of it you know and more of that support because, you know, face it, money's energy. You know, it's your time. It's, your, it's a product mainly of your time and your lifetime energy. When you're, when you're putting your time into something and you got that tangible, uh, negotiable tender, you know, it's a product of your life. And you put that in. And then that goes into that project. It seemed to have a more of an effect and benefit on the project. It's like fertilizing the garden, you know. And so that, that really works. Oh, the services are coming in with the uh, shamanic network, meaning that after that project in Colombia, physically it was hard on me. There's a lot of heavy, heavy labor, a lot of stress from just, you know, particularly after, you know, the bombing of Colum or Bogota when I was down there, you know, um, you know, that was one, too. I, I used to go practice my Spanish with this one grocery store and with these kids, and then two of them were killed in a bombing by the guerrillas because they didn't pay ransom, you know, the store didn't. And 
I just needed a vacation after that one. And I was living in this guy's uh, house, you know, in Fort Lauderdale. And then people that were different energy workers, massage therapists would come by and just work on me. You know, that they were kind of associated with that project about two layers out. And so that was part of the shamanic network that really helped me get back onto, you know, a, a prime operating operating condition. So we can go through these things, and then uh, the network kind of comes together and gives us the therapies and the rehabilitation we need, and, uh, physical, mental, spiritual support for healings of some, because some of these projects can take a toll on you. You know, it's. You know, it's some people, I don't go to places with negative energy. Like, you know, that's where the real work is. Those are the people that really need you, you know, in these kind of places where it's iffy if you're going to get out of it alive or not. And so that's where we really rely on that network to come in and, and help. Um, right now, uh, like Orshi is in uh, Transylvania. Uh, part of uh, Romania working on a really cool project and uh, and she could use all the support that can come in for that because uh, she's putting all of her time into it you know Lisa is uh, back in Spain and trying to work to get a kind of a retreat center rehabilitation center for people it's more on the shamanic line instead of the standard th psychotherapy line and so there's one that, you know, people could donate to that. So there's a lot of things that go on, you know, behind the scenes. 99.9% .9 of shamanism is behind the scenes. But we've done great work. Um, and a lot of times, just because people are there contributing their own personal life force energy, things get done, miracles happen. And again, that can be part of the network even if it's only for a day or an evening, you know, that it's just amazing when people can do so. Here is an example for one Friday night in Hungary, we got together to have a sweat lodge for a woman that was dying of cancer in Germany. And we put it out through the, the network uh, in Hungary and people just canceled their Friday night plans and assembled you know brought in all the resources that we need and and boom it was awesome and long story short you know the woman recovered you know beat that death date um and but for some reason got talked back into going into chemo went into a waking coma and died and strange so sometimes the network isn't big enough and sometimes the network doesn't have the resources it needs um, we had a girl uh, Kichi Iniko Kichi is Hungarian for like small Eniku was the name and uh, I had tried to work with her uh, two other people one other, a, another shaman in Hungary was working with her and another friend of mine so the three of us but we were just kind of stretched so thin and she was in Eniku was a really difficult case you know that needed a lot of support attention and what beautiful beautiful soul um great to work with she would have been a great shaman but was just overwhelmed with the emotional stress of life and then finally took her own life and that's where i look at we were not expansive enough we weren't big enough we weren't funded enough you know and uh and finally she just she she couldn't take it anymore it's a big shift with people when they go from everyday life into the shamanic life and they're trying to learn to live between the worlds and constantly and the best the ones that will be the best go through the hardest time because they go the deepest and Eniku was one of these people that was it was like almost like she wasn't human. She was that pure of a soul, you know, and the earth daily life, you know, was just too much for her. So, yeah, and so that's what I look at. And like with anything, there's casualties, there's collateral damage from stuff. And 
and I wish we could do more, you know, but it, it, it takes, takes the resources and funding and, and people power, you know, to be able to do all the things we need to do. So anyway, so I'm open to suggestions for things and and if you if you want to know how you can help out, you know, you know, leave a comment, you know, say you're willing to do that. If you like this kind of a um, application to life, the things that we do, uh, if you want to know more about it, again, put it in the comments and I'll you know, do other videos on it. If you want to donate, you can say that, too. Um, and we can kind of keep you updated. I was thinking, well, newsletter, but then on YouTube, just like that. I could just do shamanic updates like videos, I guess. But anyway, so here I am doing another long video. I wasn't intending to do that. All right, guys. Uh, catch you all later. Thanks for watching.